common denominator that you have with Tebow and with the woman at the well and with Philip and with the Gadarene and with your pastor is that you have a big God. Every one of you have a big God. And if you'll just begin to trust Him, it's amazing what God can do and will do in and through you. What I'd like to do is uh, we have a few stories that are living stories here with us this morning. You've heard the Tebo story, you heard Paul's story. We have a few living stories that will just testify to his glory. Your life's a story. It's being known and read by all men, and it's to display his glory. And so that's what's going to happen. First of all, we've invited Angie, if she would share with you about her story with God. Good morning, church family. Well, um, I was saying earlier to someone, if I was to really go into everything that God has done for me in my life, I would probably be standing up here all morning. So I'm going to condense it down and really speak more about this last miracle that he has performed in my life. I, I will say that I, I gave my heart and my life to the Lord when I was 11 years old. Mm. And I'm so grateful to Him there for having me at such a young age put my life in His hands because I had no idea what kind of life I was going to go forward and lead. And, and it was not always in His path. You could probably say that I am a poster child mm. for the prodigal son. You know, I spent a lot of my life running away instead of running towards the Lord. But he always had me in his hand. Well, I, I stand before you now today on paper in all my doctor's offices and everything else, I am a quadriplegic. Uh, I am supposedly paralyzed from the neck down. Um, during a time in my life that I, I was running from the Lord before this accident happened, but I was desperately seeking him back into my life. There, there wasn't a lot of bad things going on, but I could just feel him tugging at my heart, saying, it's time to come home. And I, and I prayed desperately for many weeks on my knees, just saying to the Lord, I don't know how I'm going to get back. I had drifted so far away and had so many things in my life that were keeping me from him that I just couldn't see a way back. Well, on August 24th of 2014, God made my way back. At, at 4 a.m. in the morning, I was asleep in the back seat of a car when a drunk driver going the wrong way down a one way on Route 66 right here in Rowlett, probably a half a mile from my home, hit us head on. And uh, that night I was taken into the hospital and all I remember is waking up to not being able to move at all. The only thing I could move was my head. And, and trust me, I'm a talker, and I was still talking. <laughs> they did get all of that out of me. So, at that time, it, you know, I was left completely in his hands. And I knew this. But I woke up with this knowing in my spirit, with his voice 
in my ears saying, you are my daughter. I've got you in my hands and no one can pluck you out and you're going to walk again. He told me this from the very beginning and, and my sweet mother, she told everyone, I think they've got her on way too many deep drugs. She doesn't know what's going on. She's telling me she's going to walk again. And, and the surgeons and the doctors had all told her that from this moment on, I would be in a hospital bed for the rest of my life. That I would never be able to move again that nurses and doctors and everything, they, they would have to turn me in my bed so I wouldn't get bed sores. Mm -hmm. And I told everyone, even the doctors then, because the doctor told my mother, the surgeon that did the surgery on my neck, she's never going to move again. Just get adjusted to this right now. All I'm doing is putting her head back on so it won't flop around. My neck was broken completely into, and my spinal cord had been stretched and damaged, they said, beyond the point of anything to be able to do with it. And one of the nurses told my mom, it's only him now. He's the only one that can do anything. And again, I adamantly told everyone, I am going to walk again. My God is a big God, and he told me that I am going to be a living testimony to his power and his goodness. And um, it was a slow road, and it still is today. We have, I, you know, at some time I would like to be able to bring the papers that hung on my wall as I would move a finger or I would move a toe. My family members would write it all down on a piece of paper. Praise the Lord, she moved her finger today and mm. stamp it up on the wall. Mm. And, and I'm telling you that at this moment... It was making an impact yeah. on all the nursing staff and the doctors who would come in. They had even told my mom and my family, when we walk into your hospital room, there's something different. Mm -hmm. It feels different. Mm -hmm. I had been told a couple of times by some of the believing staff you remind us of Job. And, and what, what an honor, you know, to have something like that said to me. Yeah. Because through the whole time, I never got depressed. I was never sad. No one could understand why I smiled and laughed and said, life is beautiful and it's right where it should be. And through this walk, I've learned a level of trust with my Lord that I never would have known. I'm quick to tell everyone that I am grateful. I thank God every day for this miracle in my life. And that is from the time that I lay in that hospital bed. It was a miracle to me. Because I felt his spirit. What I had cried and begged for for so many nights. I was filled with it. Mm. And I knew from that point on. That I was only going to go forward. And just be a testimony to God's goodness. And his mercy. Yeah. And his grace. And then I wanted to do everything I could do just to glorify my God yeah. who deserves all the glory yeah. because it doesn't matter how he works in your life. When he works, it's amazing. Yes, it is. And I say 
every day I've, I've had some people say to me, I, we know this is a challenge for you, and, and it just kind of blurted out of my mouth, but it's a glorious challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel His glory. Mm -hmm. I feel His mercy. Yeah. And I feel Him rising me up mm -hmm. to do his service and his goodwill, and I could not thank him enough for that. I, I I deal with a lot of pain, and throughout the nights I have spasms and things that go on that get kind of scary. But it's amazing to me how it just solidifies my relationship with him mm -hmm. you know that I can reach out to him when it's going on and say Jesus I trust you mm -hmm. you told me to take up my mat and walk mm -hmm. and I did so mm -hmm. out of your glory and I'm going to go forward and do everything everything I can just to bring praise to his name and His goodness. And I stand before you today as a quadriplegic. <laughs> Thank you, God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. I have one more testimony to God's greatness, and I do not want to leave this out. My father was diagnosed, I would say, probably two months ago with stage 3 esophageal cancer. Mm -hmm. Um, we got a report back about three weeks ago that that cancer has almost shrunk away. Mm, praise God. And we've all Thank been praying God. for him and believing, yeah. yes, yeah. he's getting another report in a couple of days, and we believe they're going to mm. say it's all gone. Mm. You know what? Come back next week because we're talking about prayer and why we need to pray. You want to be a part of that. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss next week.